Good morning. It's Thursday, 5th November 2015. Not been home from work long, just had a quick shower, had a drink, got a cup of tea. Can't beat a cup of tea. I know I keep saying this on videos, we can't beat a cup of coffee. But let's be honest, you can't beat a cup of tea in the morning. Oh, just had a biscuit as well. Extravagance, a cup of tea and a biscuit. Right, last year, I, hang on. That's better, I thought I'd charge the camera up, but it turns out I hadn't, so I've just had to plug in the cable. Right, uh, last year I did the poem, remember, remember, the 5th of November. Is it a year ago? Can't believe I've been doing this for a year. So, that was that. Right, subject of today. I decided not to do the 5th of November again or anything like that. It's, uh, it's more of a personal story. Yes, good to talk about a story. It starts on Sunday, November the 5th, 1978. This is a bit of a difficult story to tell. And you'll see why in a bit. At, now it's still dark, there wasn't even twilight or anything like that. So we're talking probably about five o'clock in the morning. I had a knock at the door, my bedroom door. It's my father telling me I had to get, get dressed quickly, come downstairs, which I did. Came in the front room, lights was on. And my father literally told me he couldn't wake my mother up. <clears throat> he left the room for a bit. I, my mum had a single bed downstairs. I'll come on to that bit in a bit. Just let me get this first lot over. I laid on the bed next to me, mum, saying, come on mum, please wake up, please wake up. But she wouldn't. My dad said, you know, you need to go down to your sisters and tell them to call an ambulance. So I stood up, went out the door. Now my sister lived down at the bottom of the street. My friend Joe was talked about, I keep talking about this Morrison's. He says, oh, you ought to do a video sometime. So I passed the house, so I'll do a video and I'll point it out when I do that video. Probably if I leave early Saturday morning, go down to do the shopping on a Saturday morning, I'll do the video on the way down. So I left the house. Now, at that time we had a dog, and it was my mum's dog, a beautiful dog. And her name was Lassie. <clears throat> now, whenever I put my coat on and she was on, she used to jump about because she knew if I was going for a walk, going down to shop or whatever, she could come. This time she was laid on the bed downstairs next to my mum and she won't make a move. Didn't jump down, didn't get excited, she just lay there next to my mum. Now, I'm pretty sure I didn't take the dog down with me. I didn't take Lassie down with me. I just rushed down. So, rushed down to my sisters, banging on the door. Oh, what's up Tony, what's gone off? Dad sent me down, can't wake my mum up. <clears throat> I was took in the house. Uh, they phoned, I mean we didn't have a phone at that time. 1978 didn't have a phone. But we didn't. They phoned. Not sure if it was the doctor or an ambulance or whatever, but 
I was kept down there. I wasn't allowed to come home. And they took me in their bedroom and said, you know, get back into bed, you know, get laid down, try to rest. I don't think I even got undressed. I don't even think I took my coat off. I probably kicked my shoes off, but I didn't get undressed. Didn't sleep because obviously I'm wondering, you know, what's going off up at me, my house. About three hours later, my father turned up. I jumped out of bed. Now what's going off type of thing. To be informed that my mother had passed away. So at the age of 13, I had to deal with that. I've seen dead bodies, you know, on TV and stuff like this, but this is the first time death had really hit me. First time I've seen a real dead person. I know that morning I was supposed to be going to church, I was supposed to be on the altar staff, and I went outside, and a friend who just lives down here, they passed me, I waved him down, told him what had happened. I don't know. I know his wife burst into tears about it. He got out of the car, she rammed his arms around me, you know, are you alright? And stuff like that. And then they went off to church. So that's what happened November 5th, 1978. <clears throat> Thing is, my mum had always suffered ill health. I know when she was a child or a teenager, she suffered polio. And the adverse effects of that, she was always advised not to have kids. But my mum wanted kids. She wanted children. And through her trials and tribulations with children. Now this, I don't know if this is a memory or something that's got mixed up, but I think she had a couple of miscarriages. And in some respects, that's why I was born. Because if you hadn't had miscarriages, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. In later life, my mum suffered with some sort of water retention. I know her knee used to swell up with water. She used to take water tablets. I can't remember the name of them. They started with an L. I'm so... Lastrix or something like that. Like, something like that. She used to take these water tablets. She used to take some other tablets as well. So my mum would suffer ill health. Anyway... <clears throat> It'd be August, September time, 1978. My mum had difficult breathing. She felt tight chested. We got the doctor out, an ambulance out. She'd had a heart attack. <clears throat> so she was took into the local hospital. I spent about three, four weeks there, as far as I can remember. I know I wasn't, first off, I wasn't allowed to go up and see her, which as I remember, it annoyed me. I couldn't go and see my mum in hospital. Eventually I was allowed to go up once she got better, got all the tubes out and all the monitors off, etc. When she came home, the doctor advised to move her bed downstairs. So we moved my single bed downstairs. So my mum got bed to lay on downstairs. I don't know when she came home. I think it was about middle of, beginning or middle of October, 1978. Now, you must remember, I'm a kid of eight, uh, 13. 18? No, 13. And up to then, I 
we'd either on the Saturday before bonfire night the local organisations Rotary and stuff like that put on a firebird display and we'd either go down and see them or we'd have a bonfire of his own or sometimes both go and see them then the following day have a bonfire at home a few fireworks etc but yeah, fireworks got noisy I mean I, as I remember fireworks I mean this is just an aside they used to be colourful a few fizzes a few bangs but not real these days you know so my imagination am I getting old that this seems to have got noisier probably discussion for next year November 5th 2016 And it may sound selfish, but I felt annoyed this year because I couldn't go. My mum was at home in, in bed. Couldn't have fireworks in the house, couldn't go. My dad wouldn't allow me to go on my own. Yeah, you're 13 year old, you're, you're not going down there on your own. So I was a bit annoyed. The evening, it must be about tea time. My mum started talking for me, slurred. That's the only way I can describe it, slurred talk. She had difficulty taking her tablets that she took at night. Because she'd been put on extra tablets due to the heart attack. So, my dad sent me down to my sisters. They got the doctor out. And to this day, I don't know why they didn't take my mum to hospital. Because they basically said she'd had a minor stroke. So this was on the Saturday night, as my mother died on the Sunday. The abiding memory was coming home. days later I said in the fireplace the old fireplace we had a coal fire in a vase was a bunch of flowers beginning to die off this is because my mum's birthday was on November the 2nd no one was born November the 2nd 1920 when we went through to the living, uh, dining room on the side there we have a like a a cupboard, built in cupboard. It's always been there. On there was like boxes of chocolates and stuff like that. stuff. My mum would be bought for a birthday. It did have, I've touched on this before, it did have a knock on effect. Age of 13, I had to grow up very quickly. Things like Bob Vine Night and stuff could never celebrate. How can you celebrate some kind of day that your mother passed away? Well, my dad was alive, never had fireworks, never went to a bonfire party or anything like that because it was the day that my mum died. I know that Christmas 1978, I decided when my dad was out at work, that we were, I was going to put the Christmas decorations so. up. My mum loved Christmas. She, she absolutely adored Christmas. She was Christmas. She'd be baking two weeks before, you know, Christmas, oh well, it'd be a month before the Christmas cakes, but then she'd be icing them and icing them for my sister and icing them for friends and baking mince pies, baking this, baking that, baking to. Doing all the plannings, making the shopping lists out. Right, we need this, we need that, we need t'other. My mum loved Christmas. And I think that's where I've got Christmas feeling from. So I decided that we were going to have Christmas decorations up. So I put them up. 
My dad came home from work and he went absolutely ballistic. I tried to explain to him, you know, my mum would want us to have the Christmas decoration. She looked, no, 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 he, he, he won't have it. And I literally, I, I'm, I'm sure I ran out of the house in tears. Went down to my sister's, told him, and she came home and had words with him. He said, no, Tony's right. Tony still wants to celebrate Christmas. Your mum will want you to celebrate, my mum will want you to celebrate Christmas. I thought my dad was going to rip down the decorations, throw the tree out the window. But he did have a knock on effect. It's. Now I had to grow up quickly, couldn't spend as much time on the schoolwork, which I've talked about before. I had to look after my dad and stuff like that. You know, schoolwork, played second fiddle basically. So I didn't do as well in my exams as I possibly could. Um, a friend of mine, Joe Kersey, said, <laughs> you know, you're interested in the medical knowledge, you might have made a good doctor. I don't think I would have got the results for to become a doctor, Joe. <laughs> Probably a teacher or acid entering the priesthood, but definitely not a doctor. But yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm ashamed to say it now, but Actually, on the 4th of November, I was quite mad that I couldn't go and see the fireworks. And then my mum took badly and then passed away on the Sunday it did. I did feel guilty about it. But yes, uh the only other thing I've got to say, I have known people since, you know, growing up that have lost their mothers and fathers. And when I've said, you know, passed on my condolences and said, I know how it feels, you know, I lost my mum when I was young. It's when I come out to speak, ah, well, you didn't have any time with your mother like we did. And sometimes I felt resented. And a couple of times I have snapped back, well, at least you've had a life with your mother. I never had that. I mean, I want to got married, but let's say if I was straight, you know, if I got married, my mum would have seen me get married, my mum would have seen me having kids and having grandkids and by me and stuff like that. You now you want to think yourself lucky that you've had the time with your mother. Well, I didn't. A bit nasty. I will admit it now. A bit nasty. You no, know, probably this snapped at me in grief and that type of thing, but... Sometimes it has hurt. On the other hand, I think it's made the person I am now. Because if my mum had been alive, I wouldn't have had to grow up quickly. So therefore, I would have had a normal teenagehood. So would I be acting different now? Probably. Don't know. You can't say. But yes... So, November the 5th for me is a bit of a sad occasion because I can still... It's one of these things, they say, oh, you forget the names, but if I sit here now and close my eyes, I'm really concentrated, I can just remember my mum's face. And it's wrong to say, but I can remember my mum's face more than my dad's face. I think I've said this before, my mum was a great influence in my life. So yeah, my mum was born November the 2nd, 1920. Passed away November the 5th, 1978. I can't really think about what else to say. I'm not going to go into any other topics because of the nature of this video. So, I just can't think about what else to say. Okay.